Hi and welcome back to another video of CAIE Backpack. Before we begin this video, make sure you subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon to get further notified in future so today's topic for the video is, how to study for your SAT with 6 guidelines. So let's begin the video. Number 1 tip is, to figure out your SAT target score. The easiest way to get a target score is to google a top choice university and average SAT scores needed for the particular university. You should find a 25th percentile score and a 75th percentile score for the school. The range between the two represents the scores of the middle 50% of admitted students. Aim for the 75th percentile score, example a higher score than 75% of the school's admitted students. As your target to make sure you have the best chance at being accepted. Remember, not everyone can or should have the same target score. It's up to you to be realistic and assess your abilities while also challenging yourself. Number 2 tips is to take a practice SAT to determine your starting point. It's important to know your abilities and weak spots before you begin studying. You can plan out your studying time based on how large of an improvement you need to make from your starting point to your target. You can also use your PSAT scores as a baseline for judging how much you will need to improve on the SAT. If you've taken the test already once you have your baseline scores, you can begin to see where you need to make improvements to reach your target. Third tip is to decide when you will take the real test we recommend taking the SAT for the first time during the fall of your junior year, but you may decide to take it earlier or later depending on your schedule and level of preparedness. In general, the early bird catches the worm, the metaphorical worm, in this case, being a higher SAT score. You'll have more potential test dates available in the future and a better idea of where you stand if you start earlier. You will also run up against much less stress. You probably don't want to be worrying about standardized tests while you're filling out college applications during the fall of your senior year. But what if you're in a scenario where you don't have your choice of test dates? Maybe you're planning a hot air balloon trip around the world that's happening at the same time as all the earlier dates. Maybe you're already coming up on senior fall and there's only one test date left. In this case, your test date is constrained and you'll need to work hard to meet the suggested number of hours before your test. Whatever the case may be, you can still find a study plan that works for you. Number 4 tip is, how many hours do I actually have to study? Based on your goals, you can figure out how many hours you will probably need to study. Follow this handy chart that shows the number of hours you should devote to poring over ancient tomes of SAT knowledge. This is a rough estimate, so it obviously isn't perfect. Each student has different levels of development in terms of study habits and test strategies. We'll go into more detail later about factors that might lead to score variations given the same amount of study time. But in our experience, this is roughly what it takes. If you want to improve by around 30 points, you'll be able to this with a live review, a single practice test, and retaking the official test. On the other hand, if you want to improve by 200 points or more, you'll need to make serious improvements in your understanding of fundamental content and skills. You also might not have this much time to devote to studying, because of other commitments. That's why you should take these early estimates into consideration while still weighing everything on an individual basis to see what works for you. Fifth tip is, to make a study plan based on your time constraints and studying style ideally, you'll still have at least 6 months or so before the test to formulate your study plan. As I've said, there is no one size fits all approach to this. You may not need to start studying 6 months in advance. Two months could be more than enough if you are already closer to your target score or prefer to study for longer chunks of time. Ask yourself how much of an improvement you want to make and then consider what is manageable in terms of time spent. Here are a couple of example scenarios. I want to improve by 70 to 130 points and I have many other commitments. Try focused studying for an hour or two every week for however much time you have before the test. If you start at least a few months beforehand, you won't be overwhelmed with yet another commitment. You'll gradually gain familiarity with questions and learn to avoid any silly mistakes that might cause you to lose points. If you can study for just 2 hours a week for 2 months, you should be able to boost your score by 100 points or so. I want to improve by around 200 points, and I have the summer to study, but I'm not sure where to start. Unstructured time is hard to manage, but this means you have your choice of when you are most comfortable and least distracted for studying times. If you schedule out a few hours each week where you will focus on studying, a couple months can be enough to improve your scores. The chart above recommends around 80 hours of studying for a 200 point improvement. If you have 3 months to study, that comes out to about 5 hours a week. Not so bad. 
If your parents invite their friends over for a barbecue, and they try to talk to you about your college plans in a desperate attempt to relate to you, you can use SAT studying as an excuse to avoid them. Everybody wins. I want to improve by 330 points or more. Am I crazy? No, you are, probably, perfectly sane. You should start studying earlier, but it's doable if you are willing to put in some serious time and effort. Especially if your initial score is below average, typically less than 1000, you have a good chance of making a drastic improvement through studying. If you still have 6 months before the test, you should think about which day of the week you will be least stressed by other commitments and schoolwork and set that afternoon slash evening aside for an SAT extravaganza. If you can block out 5 hours a week for 6 months in advance of the test, you should start to see significant positive results. Sixth and last tip is to, consider factors that increase or decrease study time you might have special circumstances that mean you need to customize your study plan more drastically. Some people should study for more or less time based on past experience and time management skills. You'll need to study longer if, 1, you've already studied a lot and you haven't seen much improvement. This typically means you need to switch up your strategies in addition to studying more. Take a step back and look at how you have been approaching your study time so you can make productive changes. 2. You're easily distracted. You might not get as much out of your blocks of study time if you are always being sidetracked by other things. Try scheduling out more time and put your phone away while you are studying. 3. It takes a while for you to learn from your mistakes. If you need to practice answering questions a few times before you understand your mistakes, you should consider studying for longer periods of time. You might improve in less time if, 1, you are new to the SAT. If you are someone who has barely looked at the test before before just started studying, you are going to see larger score gains in a shorter amount of time. 2, you're a super focused study. What might take another person 2 hours to process will take you 1, so consider dialing back your study time so you aren't overdoing it and getting test fatigue. 3, you learn quickly from your mistakes. If you never make the same mistake twice, you also shouldn't overdo it with studying. You probably only have to get the wrong answer once before you can rely on yourself to get the right one in the future. This brings today's video to the end, make sure you like the video if you found it helpful and subscribe to our channel.